Howdy! Hello! How's it going, Andy? I'm doing fiddly fine. How Great. are you doing? I'm wonderful. Today we're talking about Toucan Sam's new Cal oh, Arts goodness. redesign. We're getting deep into Paper Mario and the Origami King and how Andy feels about the entire Paper Mario series. Yeah. Uh, we're also talking about the new animated movie Scoob and our very eerily similar opinions about it. If you like <laughs> listening to Brian and I bicker about things that ultimately don't matter, you're going to be disappointed. You're going to be let down this episode, I yeah. assure you. <laughs> we, we surprise, we're still, episode 53, see, episode one, season two, we're still pulling out surprises. <laughs> things are, things are changing. <laughs> things are, things are changing. We're going to agree on literally everything now. Well, we'll see you on the other side. All right, my friend. How's it going? Oh, wait. Uh, are we? Is, it, is the episode starting? Is this it? I guess so. I started recording. Oh, okay. Hello. <laughs> hi. There wasn't like there wasn't an over the top like hi. Hi. You just you know this is a more casual episode. You know whatever. It's, it's more casual. We're both a little drinky. I'm drinking. We're both, we're both wearing jeans. Casual Friday on a I, Sunday over here. Yeah, I have um had a few white claws, so I will be be obeying no laws. Just for the record, be obeying. <laughs> Yeah. B B Y O B A, am I right? Ha. Uh White Claws, fuck the law. What's the saying? Okay. Hello Andy. How are you? <laughs> What's up? What's going on? Uh I'm doing Tell okay. Me. Um it seemed like every major pop culture faucet all turned on like the second we uploaded the last <laughs> episode of Deskbot. <laughs> like the moment that went up, everything came out of nowhere uh kingdom hearts disney plus rumors paper mario trailers um the scoob movie dropped so lots to talk about yeah Um, probably more than we'll get to (laughs) honestly in this episode so Um, other than that i haven't been up to really anything there there has been a a roach infestation in my home so Mm. i have been deep cleaning everything fun Uh, yeah it's been horrible (laughs) Jeez. and and that that's really it that that's it and that and waiting for my hair to grow back uh i definitely regret shaving my head um i would not recommend doing it if you're considering it um i don't regret okay no <laughs> i'm glad that i know i'm glad that i know what i look like without hair mm-hmm. if i could go back in time and stop myself from doing it i would so whatever, you, whatever, I'll whatever be honest, you get out of that. I, from my my own personal journey of, of hair removal, um, I have come around. I mean, obviously I have more hair now. It's stubbly. Um, but I, I feel good. I feel like if I lost a little bit of weight and then shaved it all clean shaven, I think I would feel fine. I think it kind of confronted me with my own like, heaviness <laughs> i was like oh i'm not ready for that i feel it doesn't disgusting. look bad now like it looked <laughs> like i think everybody looks super fucking weird mm. clean shaven yeah but it, with like the five o'clock shadow thing you have like yeah. that for me is like optimal like i need i, I need to yeah. trim this but I, I to be my, more like that my takeaway is like i think i'll keep my facial hair probably pretty pretty short i think i do like this better than when it gets kind of thicker so you know we win some we lose some in this game of quarantine quarantina yeah. turner she gets you eventually you know the the names for generate <laughs> for generations and whatnot i've heard the term quarantines being mm. thrown out for like the group of people growing up like with this happening and i actually really like it it's like i mean it's stupid easy like whoever came up with it was just like uh quarantine you know but it's catchy 
I li like that needs to be the uh, young adult novel series now. The I'm quarantines. I'm a thousand percent sure something is in production. Trust me. Oh, everything's in production. <laughs> I am. There's gonna be I'm, so many fucking rom. I think yeah. I said this last time. Rom coms. That's the perfect Probably. genre for this. Um, yeah. But I, I, yeah. There's gonna be a lot of stuff. I, I haven't really been up to much. Um. I did watch the uh, Harley Quinn animated series. That's kind of something we touched on last week. Um, I love it. I would highly recommend it to anyone. It's so good. Uh, it's very funny. That is everything like, I don't know. It's just so funny. There's a lot of smart jokes, even though it's kind of irreverent and dumb and like it doesn't take itself seriously. Yeah. Perfect. I did not think I would like it as much as I do, but I think it I'm a big very... fan. It does a good job at balancing just outside comedy in general, mm -hmm. uh, but also poking fun at the comics itself and mm -hmm. like this the mythos behind the DC universe with yeah. all the characters, which is great. Commissioner Gordon is, is yeah, my every, favorite character. It's, it's so good. It's so good. That take on him is just like, <laughs> that, that's fucking great. He's like I this really that. crazy old man who's always screaming. I love that Batman too is also kind of that way. It's like, it's the running joke is he's so emotionally distant that he, like he can't have you know friendships and stuff like that and like harley quinn teaches him how to like not be that way a little bit uh, like oh it's interesting that's a unique take on this dynamic <laughs> have you have you met robin yet in yes. the uh, in the show exactly he's, like, <laughs> he's voiced by like a five-year-old exactly like cat <laughs> it's really funny i you have to watch bravest warriors it's so good cat bug is great it's it's good uh, what is bravest warriors it's a um what's who's the guy that did adventure time the artist pendleton ward yeah i think he did that as well bravest warriors it's like a uh it's cartoon hangover i think i started watching it on youtube so it might be a youtube only show but it's okay. all free it's free to watch um so good bravest warriors is great uh i am seeing on the docket a creature two creatures and only uh, one can walk out alive <laughs> uh we're talking about the toucan sam redesign right now uh i'll let you go first because you've kind of formulated your opinion already and i i've looked at the image but i have not thought hard about it so you go ahead okay. you go ahead okay so i'm we'll a little pop up confused the images somewhere <laughs> I'm a little confused as to why this is so controversial. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's because the people I follow really care, but this is like a serial mascot. You know, like the, the scale of gives a shit is very low on this one because it's mm -hmm. to sell cereal. Well, um, before you continue any further, anything that has to do with anyone's childhood is always some contentious topic that people are if you change something that they are used to in their childhood people get upset and that so just continue but that's yeah. why people hate that <laughs> so i'm fine with both mm -hmm. because again i don't care like i hate all cereal mm. um oh interesting i did I not expect it to go that way <laughs> i don't like cereal okay. i don't eat it um Whenever I was a kid for Christmas, my parents would always be like, if you can eat one bowl of cereal, you can open up any present under the Christmas tree early that you want. And what? Child Andy still couldn't do it. Like, That's I could bizarre. not do it. Yeah, it was uh, fucking horrible. <laughs> Anyways, so the redesign reminds me of, like, the amazing world of Gumball. It's, it's definitely, It's like, very that CalArts style that all of the Cartoon Network shows have. It's that same style um i'm fine with it but the uh the the arms or wings or whatever mm. you want to call them look very stubby yeah uh if they just added like some fluffs or like some rounded edges to make it look more feathery as opposed to like these nubs like it looks like all of his feathers fell off of his arms mm. and if you touch it it's just like a skin texture so, so that's I think... my only issue I think I do like it. There are some points that I do not like that I think they were trying too hard to be different. The beak, I do not like. I feel what, like... Like the, the gradient colors on I it? I feel or? like it's just... It's um, 
it looks undisciplined to me if that makes sense like it looks like someone just slapped a, a gradient on and it doesn't look quite as it doesn't look like it fits quite as well um i'm fine with where the mouth is even though it is kind of odd the more i look at it um like that it sits on half the beak and half the face you know like whatever i love the little feather ruffle like the little teardrop feathers i think those are really cute uh yeah i love that i'm not a huge fan of the light blue body i don't really know that seems strange to me as well I mean, I think if you look on the image on, like, the original design, he still kind of has that light blue. It's not as, it's it's not like that, though. I mean, looking at the images together, there is a clear, like, they made it, like, light blue, whereas it's only, like, a slight shade variation on the other one. But. Okay. I, I just feel like that blue is, like, I don't know. The blue and the beak, if they had changed those, maybe I'll, like, edit I'll edit the image and try and make it look better in my eyes. Maybe I'll put that in here in the episode. Uh, <laughs> but I don't hate it. We're just going to make all sorts of promises <laughs> and not, not pull through on any of them. Our last episode, I, I don't know if you watched it, our video episode. I had a lot of fun little Easter eggs hidden in there. Little, I'll have to rewatch because I usually watch, I watch like the opening couple minutes of each episode. Mm. Um, but then that that's it. I very rarely you I've know, started to make our thing. make our episodes a little more fun to watch, like as incentive for people to watch them. Damn, you're like counteracting everything I've been doing to keep people <laughs> from watching it. Damn. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think overall, I'm fine with the redesign. Yeah, I'm fine with it yeah. too. This gets a desk pop. Thumbs up. Uh, anybody who disagrees with us should just stop eating cereal like me. Be put to death. All right, so here's our second here's our second topic. Um, what a good which may or may not Which may or may not <laughs> Here take is us, our second topic. Here is our second topic. Yeah, let's see what you do with that, Brian. <laughs> You're editing. Uh, so a trailer dropped for Paper Mario the Origami King for the mm-hmm. Nintendo Switch. Uh, it comes out in, uh, what, July? Early I don't July. remember. I, I think it's pretty soon though. I was I was surprised yeah. when I saw the it, release date. When the trailer released, it uh, from the day the trailer launched, it comes out sixty four days from then, which people are claiming uh, is a some sort of code or a message uh, in regard to Paper Mario sixty four or Super Mario sixty four. Um, I think it's a coincidence. Um, even even we'll if see. it is like an Easter egg, I feel like it's just like a fun like oh it's sixty four days like we should post the thing then, you know like someone I don't think they're confirming yeah I feel like it's just like a oh that'd be cool if we did that and then fans could find it sixty four days and <laughs> yeah and people are it's... like with their yarn on their walls and their push pins like oh my god their newspaper clippings <laughs> that and if this if this pandemic wasn't happening. Do you really think that they were going to release the Paper Mario trailer 64 days before? I think they would have I think they would have had an Nintendo Direct or something during this pandemic that would have revealed it earlier. Maybe that, I, that's I, my I still theory. feel like I still feel like they have like Nintendo Directs are pretty easy and I feel like they could have done the a Nintendo Direct if they wanted to. So I don't think they wanted to. Well, I feel like they I feel like they had one in the works but they didn't have like an opportune time to release it. That's my, Hmm. because there was like everything happening in the news cycles and then games getting delayed and stuff. They probably had things that they might have to like delay or pull. Maybe. So releasing a direct, who who knows? Anyways, Paper Mario, we're talking about (laughs) Paper Mario. Okay. Uh, So this reveal uh, further proves the Paper Mario theory we discussed a few episodes back. Um, hinting at a remaster of the Mario platformers. Uh, I'm still very hesitant to believe this. Um, looking at the past Paper Mario games, um, which the Origami King is now the uh, the sixth Paper Mario game, we've gotten a Paper Mario game on every Nintendo console um, three to five years apart each time. So this Paper Mario game matches this pattern. Can um, I tell you, before we like get into talking about this more, I yeah. was shocked about how many Paper Mario games there were. I was 
if you had asked me before this trailer had dropped and I had looked up looked up how many Paper Mario games there were, I would have said like two or three. <laughs> I did not know that there were like six other entries in the Paper Mario universe <laughs> or five yeah. other entries. There, it, it is an extensive universe. There's uh, technically seven if you consider the crossover because the mm-hmm. Mario and Luigi games had a crossover with Paper Mario. Um, but yeah, this is a series very uh, near and dear to my childhood. So this is like my this is my childhood game. Wow. Yeah, um, and I have played the 2007 Wii Super Paper Mario. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I was also shocked to find out that the original Paper Mario was on the N64. That was also like, a, whoa, that's crazy. And then I was shocked to see like, wow, they made one for the Wii U? There were lots of discoveries for me <laughs> the other day. <laughs> yeah, you should, uh, if you have the means, definitely check out the first two. Um, I think I think I have it in me to play one. So would you prefer it, I play Paper Mario for the N64 or the Thousand Year Door for the GameCube? <laughs> There's going to be a great opportunity for you to decide for yourself, but mm. if it were up to me, I would say Thousand Year Door. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I have some reference images that I'm going to bring up later mm-hmm. uh, Understood. that might sway your decision here. <laughs> yeah. So, um, let's go ahead and dive in to um, our thoughts on this trailer. Yeah. Why don't you crease with me and be reborn? Yes. So the graphics are great. Um, with the last Paper Mario game, there's like this paper texture on everything, and they just went further with this, and it looks so fucking good. I loved it. I, I as soon as I saw this trailer, I was like, I'm getting this game. This looks the, so good. The like tin foil, gold foil looking thing on the like doors of the castle when it opens up, mm-hmm. ugh, is like every Paper Mario game has been leading up to this, and it's so great (laughs) i love this aesthetic it's Mm -hmm. it fits right in with like nintendo's latest like habit of getting the yoshi games and kirby's epic yarn and making everything look very crafty even a little bit of the link's awakening i feel like there's yeah there's something there another one it it's like making things look realistic but Mm -hmm. in a it looks like it has it's like the Lego movie. Like you see the little mm-hmm. scuffs on the plastic and like the little, it, it's really great. I this agree. Is, this is what excites me when I think of next gen graphics, not like high fidelity, like human not, yeah, not looking faces humans and the skin like that. That does nothing for me. <laughs> I want to, I want to see like the individual, like <laughs> teared textures of like paper Mario mm-hmm. as he like, runs along i want like the water to be made mm. out of like ribbon that is like seamlessly flowing yeah, yeah it just ugh. so this game looks great partners seem to be back which is something a lot of fans were wanting to see return was that the Paper little Mario. the little bowser hopping behind him on the yeah uh the bowser trailer. jr um following mario in the in the trailer there's also a ba- a bomb um mm. very cleverly named bomb um who was showcased in this trailer? Uh, you see a an explorer toad looking guy following Mario. Um, people are a little torn. People don't know if these are the traditional partners from the past games, or if these are just people that follow you around. Like little RPG, like yeah, story events that yeah. Yeah, we'll find um, out. There was a Chinese trailer that Nintendo quickly took down after launching. Controversial. Uh, that showed. <laughs> that showed mario in battle uh and it was the same clip that we got all the other regions got however in the chinese clip toad is standing behind mario in the battle sequence which makes people think nintendo's purposely hiding the uh party member mechanics in the game why i don't know so maybe we won't have partners who i don't know why they would hide that that's i mean like a maybe, maybe they feature. are saving something for a nintendo direct i don't know that just seems like a such an integral part of like combat in general mm-hmm. to hide it is just like i i, I don't know but i nintendo. mean yeah i was gonna say you and i know nintendo work in mysterious ways nintendo works in mysterious ways nintendo they, work in mysterious nintendo work in mysterious ways <laughs> they do what they <laughs> ryan <want>. sullivan <laughs> nintendo work um what, what what else what else do we got here um, so you have a lot of 
You go, you go ahead. But I mean, you have a lot of graphics here. So, uh, yeah, and that I, I'm okay. So my one issue with this game and the okay. Paper Mario series as a whole, and you okay. can go ahead and scroll down on the agenda and look at this I'm, reference image I have. I'm the looking, dock. and maybe I'll briefly scroll it up through the, the video. Yeah. <laughs> well, so in this reference image, there are a bunch of different toads seen in the paper mario and the thousand year door okay there are toads with canes mustaches glasses hair they're wearing different outfits um some have different skin tones um some mm. are very clearly different genders and then you see all the toads Gender is that a you construct get... sure um Continue. then you get to see all the different toads you see in the last two paper mario games color splash and sticker star and the distinct difference is all the toads you see in the last two games are generic, just very generic toads. There's no distinguishable difference, no character traits at all. They're just vanilla toads. And that's kind of more in line with most traditional Mario games. Yes. Yeah. And that's what annoys me. Now let's go ahead and open up all those reference so, images I sent. Uh, before we do that... Um... Actually, I can't do that because of how we're recording. But, um, so, are these that way in the Super Paper Mario? Because that one's not in the, like, I don't see that title. I see Thousand Year Door, and then it skips to Sticker Star and Color Splash. So, uh, was yeah. Super Paper Mario, was that? Um, Super Paper Mario did have different uh, variety. All the images I sent outside of the uh, agenda okay i got a bunch of different characters from each paper mario game okay just to I'm showcase pulling those up now on my phone okay through the power of um, technology are you able to see like the name of the image files on your phone no uh i can but only if i click on it so just tell me if it's like the first one you sent or the last one you sent <laughs> um the first one i sent uh okay it should say there's like Paper Mario, Paper Mario 2, 3, 4. They're numbered. Yeah, I see Paper Mario 5, which is the first one you sent me. Oh, that's weird. They must have sent out of order. <laughs> okay, so did you send me Paper Mario 1? <laughs> yeah, okay. Paper I'm Mario 1 at, is the... I'm looking at Paper Mario without, okay. without any numbers. Okay, so take a look at all those characters, and you can okay. see that they're all pretty diverse. There's yeah. lots of characters that make their first appearance in the Mario universe in general such mm -hmm. as fat shy guy this cool <laughs> flower looking guy the dizzy king goomba yep goomba king uh that is the first appearance of the goomba king um he's appeared in other mario games but this is his first appearance sexy pink star with the ribbon yep <laughs> the very diverse cast here weird ghost guy witch yeah. on a broom baby a pink son. bomb yeah uh, a butler with a butler boo character a baby lightning bolt charge person the bomb buddy yeah there, there's all sorts of zany characters mm. now go ahead and open up the uh the second one let me find it okay i think i have paper mario 2 open again very weird characters there's like this like playboy bunny cat boo character there's like a bean bartender um there's like a, a ghost spirit flurry person who's great uh, um, hold, hold on a second i think i have a different image open it's the one with the skeleton looking guy on it what's the character in the top left just tell me that um th the character on the top left is this mega man looking guy he has like a globe looking head and it's blue okay yeah i didn't see any of the other characters you were talking about but continue <laughs> Again, like very diverse cast of characters, okay. different species and stuff. They're very uh Okay, I see Yoshi with the Mohawk, uh Koopa with the oh Lady Koopa. Yeah, yeah I see. And so these are all the fun and great characters you meet in the second game. Yes. I figured this might impact your decision, like whichever character styles you like better. Maybe. Um But alright, so let's go ahead and open up the third one. Okay. This is the third paper super paper Mario characters you're you're familiar with uh, yeah, again, somewhat, like, yeah and if you played the game they're all like all their personalities just come right back when you look at them so you look yeah. the fucking nerdy 
nerdy chameleon guy, mm -hmm. Demito, Demito, Demi I didn't Demi beat this game, by the way. I rented it from a game crazy and I played it for a weekend. So, okay. <laughs> um, when I said I all... played it, I meant like literally for three days. I think literally all these characters are all original characters made just for this game. I do like the character design. I will yeah. say that that was a strong point of me playing the, the, the game when I was younger. All right, so let's go ahead and go to the next the next one. Okay, I have Paper Mario 4 open. It's getting a little okay. less exciting. Okay, so the cool thing about this one is all of the characters here have all existed outside of the Paper Mario games except for this crown character who okay. is the only character that's original to Paper Mario. Okay. Uh, and... All the other characters are like, oh, I had to pick and choose which ones I wanted to show you. This is literally all of the enemies and mm. bosses and NPC characters that you talk to in this game okay. outside of Princess Peach, Luigi, and Bowser. Okay. This is all of them. They're all boring. <laughs> They're all boring, generic Mario enemies. Now let's look at this last one. Okay. Again, this is every NPC and every boss fight you encounter in this. Every literally every character you meet in this game is on that picture in front of you right now. Mm. Omitting like, oh, like sometimes the shy guys are bigger than normal, uh, etc. So okay, this again. Did you only... did you play these games? The last two games? Uh, yes, I did. Okay, I was just curious. Um, so. That's the frustrating part about Paper Mario to me is that the writing is consistently funny and it's good. Combat's always changing. That That's not really why I come to Paper Mario every single time. It's to see this Mario universe that I'm familiar with explored in different ways, to see all the regions that you don't see in the mainline games. Sure. And we're starting yeah. to veer away from that and seeing these same vanilla characters we can see in any other Mario game and that's not fun for me, because if I wanted to see the Koopalings again, I'd play literally any other Mario game. Yeah. Uh, so that's my big complaint about about the series is that for some weird reason, they're very fixated on not making any new character stuff. Well, I mean, and from, can... what, from what we've seen in the trailer, we've already seen the Origami King. You know, he's a different character that we haven't seen before. Um, so that's already yeah. one, you know. Well, that, that seems to be the trope is that, well, actually, this one stands out because the last two Paper Mario games, the only original characters is the main partner guy that follows you around. Mm. This one, it seems to be main partner guy follows you around and then the origami king. And then but, the rest of it we, is like... we haven't seen the rest of the game, so we that don't is know true. Yet. <laughs> um, That's very true. Um, although I'm discouraged because the party member that seems to to have been highlighted is just a generic bomb ba bomb hmm. but again i'm totally open it could it could very well be different that's the only thing that struck me as a bad thing in this trailer everything else looked great but there there was not like any original character thing yeah. in this that like and it just frustrates because it's like it's a conscious decision they've yeah. made these other games like with a huge cat like i was like i couldn't fit them all into a sheet when i was making these yeah but then with the last two it's like i could just fit them all because they're like <laughs> they're they're all there um, I, yeah i mean i feel like i get your frustration but at the same time i don't know i think it it probably comes from different teams working on the property potentially and um like, I'll be honest, the last two games I had never heard of. So I almost want to say from my perspective, it sounds like they might have phoned those ones in a little bit um, just to have something come out. Uh, I don't know. Obviously, I didn't play them. But for not even knowing about them when I did know about the others, it's kind of strange. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, so maybe they just wanted to make a game and they weren't too like there wasn't a lot of heart put into it and <laughs> that's what it comes across to as me like the, the general consensus from me. the last two games 
is that the writing is still like on par with the rest of the series. It, the series is kind of known for being like this really funny, very cleverly written um, series. Yeah. And I've never completed the last two games just because the nostalgia from the past games clouded my judgment of this new one because it's like <clears throat> all the characters are so generic and I've seen what once was. So I'm, you know, I, did, I, didn't, get, I didn't get to finish it. Mm. But from what I played, it it's it's pretty funny. And mm. some they make some self referential jokes to like, ah, how can you tell these toads apart? We're all like, we're all just toads. Yeah. But that's not enough for me. <laughs> um, anyway, so you hear that this, Nintendo? It's not enough for Andy. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm torn. Like it looks great. I'm going to buy it, but. It, it, I feel like if I like come out and say, "Oh, I really liked this game once I finished it," I'm giving them like a thumbs up to just keep not d- making new stuff, new characters. Maybe, but I mean, you know, maybe there, maybe there's more than what we saw in the trailer, and maybe it will meet your expectations. You I know? hope so, because that uh, was the only that was the only thing that really like. That's the only thing I didn't like about this trailer. They have everything to gain. Yeah. and nothing to lose by giving giving a toad a hat like yeah. i don't know give them a mustache or something they all yeah i, want... I mean sometimes i mean you and i have we've worked in you know places where we've designed things and sometimes people want things changed and people want things to all look the same and whether you know that as an artist or a designer that it might be better to have you know unique images or unique you know things that set things apart sometimes people above you just want a baseline of what they've been getting or you know so it may just be out of someone's hands you know i feel like you're giving me like breakup but, you know like sometimes <laughs> things change and you know hey, that's, a, that's just how it is and it's not me it's you <laughs> yeah. so it's i think um so what people are saying is when they were making the 3DS version of Paper Mario, which is Sticker Star, uh, what people refer to as like the downfall of the series, the, the appearance the, of all these toads. Super uh, Paper Mario, Sticker Star, the downfall of the Paper Mario series continues. Yes. <laughs> um, but uh, Shigeru Miyamoto picked up uh, a demo version of the game, which was said to have been very similar to Thousand Year Door from the GameCube. Okay. He was very disinterested and he was like, this just looks like the GameCube version. You need to do something different. And then he oh. said, people don't really care about the story. You should simplify it. Oh. And apparently he'd like directed them to only use characters from mainline Mario games. So people don't get confused with the brand. Well, there you go. That's what I was saying. Yeah. Yeah. But like. It comes down people, from someone that you just like yeah. all the artists are like, it would be so great to have these cool characters. And yeah. And, yeah Dude, story doesn't matter in this rpg <laughs> like hmm, i wonder why people are playing this mario game that's different from all the other one maybe it is the fact that it has a story maybe the fact that the... it's different yeah um anyway i so love that bowser's happened... inside story that's one of my favorite mario games that's another thing like yeah. the mario and luigi games like have been co- like existing alongside paper mario and that's why i thought the paper mario combat changed mm. because they're both they have similar combat systems yeah so I was, I was fine with that but why didn't miyamoto like comment to them telling them not to make new characters and new location because they always make up new species and stuff well the studio's out of business now but like the <laughs> fuck what why didn't they make like new characters and stuff like why were they allowed to do that but paper mario wasn't it's was just a bunch of crap and this yeah. game series is so great and ah, ah. Yeah. Uh, and thank you for allowing me to get uh, <laughs> a, giving me a platform to <laughs> vent about the entire series when we should be talking about one trailer no you're welcome this is this is all for you my son it's I... just so <laughs> annoying I have I have an 8 bit bubble bobble dragon uh, tattooed on my body mm-hmm. and like a very close runner up was Paper Mario but I didn't because I'm like, how I can't be guaranteed that this series is going to be great forever because <laughs> Sticker Star and Color Splash came out and they were both like very different from what 
I really enjoy, you know, it just. Can I give uh, you some, some heartfelt advice? Sure. Please. Okay. Uh, I was going to give it anyway, if, even if you didn't say, say so. Yeah. Uh, I think that if that's something you feel compelled to get because you have good memories of something like old games, then I say go for it. And I think, you know, even if the series doesn't continue to do well, and if it does go downhill, you know, you don't enjoy it, you still really enjoy the other games. So that these new games coming out won't ever take away your good memories of the old games. You know what I mean? Well, I think it's man i can't okay <laughs> here, no. here, here, here it goes <laughs> it's very similar to star wars <laughs> okay in that it's hard for me to think of like just one star wars trilogy and not immediately think of the others if that makes any sense so yeah if again like if paper mario like i look at like uh, if i have a tattoo of paper mario i'm gonna look at it and I can't just think of my isolated memories of playing the older games. I'm going to think about the newer stuff that's out, you know? And so it's going to make me like, oh yeah, I remember that thing that <laughs> I really liked that isn't that's the same ruined. as it was anymore. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, it's like anybody who has Toucan Sam tattooed on their body. They're going to look at that <laughs> tattoo and they're going to think, Why you man, this has turned into an abomination. <laughs> Why do you have to call me out like that? I don't appreciate it. <laughs> can we get Dusk Pop? Can we get uh, Dukan Sam tattoos? Next episode of Dusk Pop from the tattoo I, parlor. I would, you know, I don't hate it. <laughs> You're the one that doesn't like cereal. <laughs> I would, yeah. I just want the colors changed. I want like that a should, flat color that, bill. That should be the uh, the new scale of whether or not we approve of something. Like, would you get it tattooed on you or, or not? <laughs> I don't know. Ride or die. <laughs> ride or die. <laughs> Toucan I'll, Sam. I'll always ride and die. Get fucking tattooed on my forehead, man. <laughs> Toucan Sam for life. Uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like, I don't know. Something that you feel like may have been a new idea, a new take on a property that you loved. Uh might be something like the uh, the Scoob movie, that uh, is a take on a new take on a property that I love. <laughs> here, here, let's transition from talking about people who keep doing the same thing to people who did something completely different <laughs> with the property. This is a complete um, 180 on all fronts. Let's, Scoob, and I'm gonna let you yeah. spearhead this. I do want to like for a minute before we get like any spoilers about the movie, um, just kind of say our general thoughts, say how we feel about it. I know you probably have a rating ready to go. Um, I would recommend the movie. I think it's good. I enjoyed it. Um, it's very obviously a kid's movie. Uh, and I think some kids movies have such good writing that they transcend that that kids movie label yeah. and i don't think this quite does that i think it is it fits squarely in a kids movie box <laughs> and that is where it lives and it's not for adults uh so i 100 percent agree with yeah. that perfectly yes um yet yeah, you you set it up when you're babysitting and you get on your phone that that's I, really that's really it i think if you like scooby-doo like i do um that i've like i've had this scooby-doo awakening over the past year that you've been you've had front seat tickets to uh me discovering my scooby-doo identity that i love scooby-doo so much uh but i feel like i'd see it to see it but it is not a movie like trolls world tour where i would recommend it to anyone um yeah Trolls World Tour. Have you seen that yet? No, I okay. I need to. That's a movie that I think does transcend that kids label. I think it does a I good job. I think most kids movies these days like really transcend. Some. <laughs> Let's not get crazy. <laughs> Some. <laughs> which movies? Which kids movies? Like I'm thinking like animated. Like Toy Story was like a latest one that like kind of most Pixar I, stuff kind of like. I passed. agree with you, but then there's stuff like Despicable Me that I. Don't oh yeah, feel like no. does I don't that. think that's recent though. Like I'm talking like last year, this I year. I think they're they they still 
the reason that stuff comes out um unfortunately is because it's people are like oh kids will watch fucking anything and so they don't take they don't pay attention to like the writing and they don't make it um actually funny they just make a whole bunch of like stupid jokes in there that maybe kids will laugh at but and and that's the easy thing to do and it doesn't it doesn't cost a lot to have someone just shit out a script in a week you know i don't i don't know how long despicable me took to write but i bet it wasn't very long (laughs) to be fair (laughs) i need to rewatch it because i don't want to like i this isn't a hill i'm gonna die on but I honestly think that they pro they probably tried with the first one. Maybe. And then the second two they were like, fuck it, let's make the minions purple. Maybe. <laughs> that that's the thing for this one. But anyway, um, anyway, get back to yeah. Scoob. Uh that is kind of my biggest negative uh to the movie. Um I feel like it has kind of unfortunate kids writing slash slash logic. Uh, in a lot of scenarios, it's it's very just like you have to just not think about anything too hard. Um, but, you know, it follows the origin story of, of Scooby-Doo meeting Shaggy and then also meeting the gang, which is really cute. Um, they get into a situation where uh, Scooby-Doo and Shaggy are um, being chased by the main villain of the film um, which, and you know, is Dick Dastardly from um, Wacky Races, which is interesting. Um, and ultimately, you know, we'll get to the finale in a little bit, but it's kind of like a normal Scooby-Doo hijinks, like, you know, movie. Sure. <laughs> they uh, get kidnapped. Uh, yeah. Or they get abducted. Do you want to give me your writing the... first off or? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I gave this, I think, a 7.26, um, uh, out of 10 or so. Oh, wow. I was expecting, oh, okay, whoa. That's really high still. All right, give me one second. <laughs> I just was when you I'm prefaced, trying to like you prefaced our my... conversation earlier that made me sound like it was going to be like a 2 point something. I was like, "Oh man, this is going to be very controversial." But yeah, no, I think I think I we like both I kind of I agree with you. That's a good rating. Out of the 51 movies I have seen this year, this movie is number 28 with a 76.2 out of 100 on that's, my scale that's not bad <laughs> um what's your worst movie i'm just curious the worst movie i have seen is harpoon i'm, okay. I'm working on this really cool graphic showcasing the top five movies of this year and that's what i was working that's why i was late to recording today and it looks really unprofessional fucking cool. unprofessional uh, i'm gonna have to show you what it looks like i love it but <laughs> yeah um I did not. I did not like this movie. Um, or okay, well, it's like, so they get kidnapped, but or they're getting attacked by robots. So okay, from Blue this Falcon point on, there will be spoilers. <laughs> yeah, Blue Falcon swoops them up, says that Dick Dastardly's looking for these dinosaur skulls to Which, open up a portal. I will say I like the inclusion of Blue Falcon in the movie. I think that's really cool. Like that's been a, a staple in Scooby Doo for a little while. You know, I think it's sure. a neat neat yeah. inclusion. Um. They're trying to stop Dick Dasterly from getting the dinosaur skulls. Velma, Daphne, and Fred eventually stumble into Dick Dasterly's plan, get abducted. Um, fast forward, he gets the third dinosaur skull. They all get back together. Mm-hmm. Um, he opens up the portal. You find out, and this is really touching, he's trying to open up a portal to the underworld because his beloved dog, Muttley, yeah, was stuck on the other side uh, after a failed heist. So he's trying to save his dog. Dick dastardly manages to rescue Muttley from the underworld, but he accidentally unleashes Severus, who starts attacking people, I guess, but there's nobody really around and there's no major cities or anything. He's just kind of... Anyways, the gang work together with Blue Falcon in order to put Severus back into the afterworld. Cerberus. Cerberus. Uh... Shaggy must sacrifice himself and stay on the other side in the underworld in order for them to close the gate because him and Scooby's friendship is so strong and Scooby's related to an ancient dog or something. He's related to Achilles' dog. The fucking, the door closes. It's very simple. This is literally the plot to Kingdom Hearts. The door closes. It's pretty Kingdom Hearts, yeah. The door closes and since their friendship was so strong, 
Shaggy manages to come back. Well, Literally no. Kingdom Hearts. No, and this is another problem with the, the, the movie. They for built me. like some spec. There's this like Deus thing. Ex Machina thing, and they're like, they're they're sad for twenty seconds. They're like, oh my god, Shaggy's yeah. dead forever. He's never coming back. He's trapped in the underworld. Um, this is bullshit. Everyone's crying. It's 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 almost it almost reaches an emotional moment, and then about ten seconds later. This Deus Ex Machina thing, they're like, Velma's like, well, if Achilles built this, he wouldn't want to be away from his best friend, so there must be a back door. And then, like, literally, the statue appears, and the bottom of the statue ends up being a door. And, and then Shaggy then, shows back up. Yeah, it's like, fam. I'm like, you couldn't have let us have that for another minute. Like, I was almost I... to the point of feeling like, wow, this is really sad. Well, I wrote a better ending. I wrote... <laughs> and... Shaggy dies in the underworld. <laughs> so, this is my last page, because I thought we were going to talk about the ending last, but okay, we you, are. You, you skipped um, to it, and then I had stuff to say. <laughs> so, um, maybe set... Okay, so all they need to do is, in order to close the door, they need to, like... So, they're like, okay, we need to close the door. Well, then, uh-huh. this big platform raises uh, beneath scooby and shaggy so now they're like really high up into the air and then some disembodied voice makes them do a series of like puzzles or tests or something against a clock and if they're not able to do it in time they're stuck in the afterworld uh underworld forever or something and all the puzzles and tests have to do with like friendship and they have to coordinate and so then you have like that like tension there's stakes because they're gonna get trapped forever if they fail it's a test of their friendship like the other one and then they don't set up and they don't set it up to where one of them sacrifices himself because it's a Scooby-Doo movie. No one's going to sacrifice themselves and not come back. That's expected. Yeah, for so sure. you need to set up realistic stakes to where it's like, you know, it's semi believable. Um, and so that's Can my I, thing. Like make them, let me them tell in you my ending. <laughs> sure. Let me tell you my ending. So it was a thing earlier in the movie twice and i thought it was going to pay off in the end but it didn't they make a big deal of it in the beginning shaggy gives scooby this collar with the scooby doo yeah Uh, then later when they're with the blue falcon my cheeks are getting so red i am so drunk he's pissed He's so uh, pissed. <laughs> uh so later with there with the blue falcon they're fitting scooby with this like super suit and uh they've determined he's special and shaggy is not um shaggy has a big inferiority complex about that uh so scooby who has not acted rude in any way looks at shaggy and he's like do i take this off like what would you rather me do and shaggy nods or like gives him the approval um scooby takes it off even though in his promise he said he would never take it off in the beginning uh yeah and shaggy kind of throws that in his face and scooby's like later like you nodded at me which is kind of like a throwaway like joke line but he's like you gave me the nod that i could take this off and like you were fine um but shaggy is not fine he's very upset uh so i thought in the end the key to them like being able to um both be on the like living side of the world would be uh somehow the like collar the necklace like the the symbol of their friendship is yeah. is like placed in in like where the hand slot goes for the the um underworld key or whatever like somehow that mm. suffices for their their bond their friendship um that's a really good ending so and i thought that was like okay this is how this is gonna pay off the whole time yeah. and it didn't <laughs> i like that better than well which ending do you think is better let us know in the comments <laughs> let us know in the comments <laughs> i mean brian's ending is better because it incorporates the thing but um yeah so that yeah the ending really sucked um i'm gonna it was, go through it my... was the ending actually like i thought the movie got better over time i thought the ending was fine the beginning was a little rough. The middle was like, oof. After they, I was waiting for them. Like they got the out of the beginning was bark. <laughs> After they sh- so showed the younger Mister Ink meeting up and becoming Mister Ink, I was like, okay, great. They did a first mystery. 
let's speed this along. And they, it dragged that first, that beginning half. I was waiting. I was waiting. I thought, I, <laughs> I was like, what is going on? There's no direction thought, for this movie. I, I, I'm going to go down my bullet point list. And okay. if you want to interject, you can. I will. I, I, gotta, I, I gotta, promise okay. I will. <laughs> I have a list next to me as well. <laughs> I'm going to uh first off, let's just talk about this is like the first big cinema experience that we've uh that I've experienced uh through video on demand. And I did I have Second to say me, that baby. it was an experience being able to get this theatric theatrical film, download it or not download it, but put it on I bought it through uh the YouTube movies thing. And then I could just pause it anytime I saw an Easter egg and replay scenes and like look in the background of stuff. And I was was, able to like really analyze frame by frame and take notes. I think I might have had a better time in theater with this one because I think I would have been able to put my I I would have been able to suspend my disbelief a little bit more. Sure. Uh, It from this standpoint, from me reviewing it, it helped a lot more Mm -hmm. because I remember when I was watching Cats, I brought a fucking notepad and I was like. (laughs) Because I was like, oh, we're going to be talking about this, so I need to write down. Anyways, okay. I am gonna. I made... Here are all the pros of this movie, the things I like. Because <laughs> okay. I'm going to... I'm about to tear a new one into this fucking movie as okay. soon as I'm done complimenting it. So, um, so they used classic references to the old show very nicely. There mm-hmm. wasn't too many, but there was enough to show that they respected the source material. I liked the the recreation of the title sequence I in the original. That. I thought that yeah. was a really good scene. Yeah, it was kind of subtle. Like if you didn't ca- if you didn't like realize it was shot for shot, then it j- was just a montage. Yeah. It did its job. Yeah, I, I like, think it's pretty easy to recognize because it's like Fred sitting in that chair reading and falling backwards, and like there were lots of silly things. I liked that they were young when that was happening. I thought that was a neat touch. Yeah. Um, the origin story was pretty fast. Thank God. Mm -hmm. Like I did not want another. Yeah. I Um, was, that is one of my pros. The origin story was cute. And to the point, I like that they didn't spend half the movie establishing mystery. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Daphne and the vacuum robot that back and forth that they had. That was adorable. I loved it. Yeah. All those robots in general were so cute. I liked the one, the vacuum that I liked the vacuum one. Okay. (laughs) that one was cute <laughs> are the other um, ones on your cons list <laughs> <laughs> all the other ones i i think there's a, i think it's like it's very similar to like minions there's just like this trope it, of like it, there's like all is. these minions that all look exactly the same and every animated movie has to have one little mascot thing that they could potentially yeah, a bunch of yeah i don't i don't like that uh it was i thought just these like, were oh, very cute and they like they they were very expressive and like and the fact that they also turned into murderous robots was funny. I liked that. Um, but anyways, I, I really like the the Daphne thing. I think it was very natural for her character, and it was like a very nice um, any plot point that revolved around that robot. It felt natural. It didn't feel forced at all. And usually, um, her character isn't. It's it's hard because usually everyone else has a thing, and she's the only one that doesn't always have a thing. She yeah. used to be like the girly girl and they used to and I they've tried to steer away from that because that's like not really a personality, you know what I mean? Just being yeah. feminine. And I'm so, the girl. Yeah, and yeah. so like they, they've tried to give her other things and certain Scooby Doo's she's like really good at karate and she's like the fighting one and some she's like, Oh, I can pick ha- things with a hairpin and like cause it's girly and I don't know. I thought this yeah. was this was a good uh role for her to fit they mentioned in the beginning she's like the empath she's the person that people like and i was like that's good that's a good role um now that you're on your scooby-doo kick you should check out be cool scooby-doo it's a series before this latest one i i watched a couple of them i like it because like each episode it's a running gag that each episode daphne has like a different hobby she's picked Mm. up and she's like oh like i'm really into puppets and then the next episode she's like really into a different thing because she's like so desperate to find a well that's like i i imagine that's what they probably did because it's a joke and like in every series they always give her something that makes her you know it's scooby-doo on zombie island she's a reporter and it's like but everyone else has their normal thing so yeah I fucking love that. Um, anyways, um, Dick Dastardly looked great. Um, they I loved veered, it. They veered away from his like initial design, but mm. like 
in this case i really liked it his I voice it was, was strong, great he... and i thought also having a, the main villain of the movie be dick dastardly instead of a scooby-doo villain was wonderful i thought that was a great choice i'm torn on that and i'll get into mm. that in a, in a, in a second mm. um so here's a list of every joke in this movie that got a uh, hmm out of me all right the uh the part where blue falcon saying hey uh adventure's calling yeah. and it's this big moment he gives his fake phone to shaggy and he's like hello like i'm not interested bye yeah. the, that was kind of funny um the whole part of like oh it smells like shaving cream or something and she's like is the bad guy my dad yeah i thought that was pretty funny i liked it but i just was like oh, we already saw that in the trailer what For a sure. bummer what a bummer um the uh shaggy describing what happened he was like yeah he said i wasn't needed then he threw me through a wall <laughs> <laughs> like, i thought that was pretty funny yeah um blue falcons talking about like this book that his dad wrote and then he wrote another one called just falcon around mm-hmm. uh, that was pretty funny that was good yeah um there's a part where the mystery machine is destroyed and it's an ongoing joke that fred is like in love with the van yeah and way baby. later after the van is destroyed they're all hiding from the monster and they're like where's fred and then it cuts back He's to the van there. and fred's still there <laughs> that was good that was yeah sad. that was really good they i was and this happened right when i was like questioning out loud like they haven't had any scooby snack references in this movie and then Daffy they have one pulls in the beginning they have one in the oh, beginning they, yeah well they when they mm. when he names him but like uh, which was an interesting origin i was like usually I hate, I, I hate that naming convention but it makes sense because i've always thought like why is scooby like have this s- snack named after him and in this this movie i was like that's a good explanation like he's named after the snack you know yeah um but <laughs> daphne pulls out a scooby snack uh-huh. uh to distract the monster and then scooby immediately snatches it from her hand and she's like oh well that's why i always have that one as a decoy i have the real one and then he eats that one too and and that's kind of funny yeah um there's a part where dick dastardly disguises himself as a as an attractive police officer who pulls over fred who immediately uh becomes very nervous and flabbergasted at the thought of uh an attractive female officer Mm -hmm. um only to find out it's dick dastardly and yeah he has like this kind of comedic response to it because it was kind of obvious that it was a disguise like as a viewer sure and him acting so surprised like what yeah uh it was really funny and those are all the funny jokes the rest of the jokes are really cringy and i wrote down the really cringy ones uh in the cons list yeah we probably don't have time to read them all but i feel like i i'm looking at your list and the things i agree with uh the things i actually wrote down that i think uh so here's one wow your cons are like so eerily similar to mine it's crazy um will forte's shaggy did not grow on me either yeah will forte like it was just it sounded too first off every rendition of shaggy i've ever heard has sounded similar if you're gonna do something new i want to hear something like something fresh and like actually cool instead of just will forte's voice like it sounded just like his normal voice and also he's an old guy (laughs) he is not a teenager (laughs) he did not sound like a teenager (laughs) or like however old they were supposed to be he is a much older person i keep hearing people say like oh like they recast it because they wanted to be younger but like everybody like shaggy lillard would have been much better like shaggy's consistently sounded like exactly the same mm. from every voice actor yeah and even in this movie like shaggy visibly is like roughly the same age as he is in the other shows anyways they're, yeah they're all i would say like young 20s that's the impression they, i got and then will forte sounds like he's a 40 year old man they the only reason they recasted these people is to use the names of these celebrities to sell tickets which is yep. very counterintuitive when you're making a kids movie centered around a brand as big as scooby-doo and kids yep. aren't gonna go will forte <laughs> yep simon I, cowell i i agree i don't understand it uh simon There's cowell this, that was the least funny thing in this entire that was movie so for me. fucking stupid like do i didn't kids like even it. know who simon cowell is anymore like i didn't like it because it happens twice in the movie and also his 
character model did not look good. I, I the small that was eyes, another complaint. It was it just didn't fit the universe. I was like, what is this? Like the char- this like I is, felt like the is, trailers. Is it because he's than... a part of Warner Brothers? Like, is that the thing? Like, I don't because I don't he's think like. So. Uh, I assume American Idol and stuff is on their channel or whatever judge show he's a part of is on their channel. So they had access to him. That's what I'm assuming. That's the only explanation that would fit. Cause like, why else would you get fucking Simon Cowell? Mm. Somebody who like nobody, yeah. like maybe I'm in like this small cave. No, and I don't I, know. I, like, I was if he's still doing stuff, but like what, as the I fuck? wrote that, as I wrote that down on my cons list, I was like, Oh, I'm going to write this down. Andy's going to actually like Simon Cowell being in this. No, I was like, Oh, I was like, this is going to be awkward. And then I saw your list and I was like, thank God. Like, it was so fucking cringy. Like, what is he doing? <laughs> Get the fuck out of my Scooby-Doo movie. I, I see your list. And the only one that I think would have worked that I would have been fine with is Dwayne Johnson. I think yeah, I, that makes I wrote sense. Down, it would have been kind of funny. I was like, Dwayne Johnson is a big guy. Like, they mm. could have put him in there. I put Elon Musk. Um, yeah. Because it's like, oh, he's rich. He's uh, an, Mark an Cuban, investor, yeah. Because he's an investor guy. Yeah. And then Robert Downey Jr. Because Mark he's so Cuban detached. would have made a lot of sense, yeah. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. is so detached from yeah. Warner Brothers being in Disney and stuff. And he's like the most paid actor. It would have been a totally unexpected but recognizable gag to yeah. have him in there. Yeah. Um, I agree. But yeah, they. Um, but Will Forte Shaggy is like fucking. I don't want to say it's bad, but it's so it's so hard to pay attention to the the movie and put yourself in there when you hear this voice that's yep. like it's clearly not a shaggy voice. <laughs> it's constantly a reminder that they yeah. changed the act. Shag- can I can I tell you something that actually makes it harder to um, suspend your disbelief and watch a movie? Sure. Uh, when your name is said throughout the entire movie um it's a running and and this is like i hate these jokes i don't think they're funny i think that it was funny at a point and now this this form of comedy has run its course when someone says a random name as comedy like just saying a random name you're supposed to laugh like oh karen like oh you're supposed to laugh because oh yeah i said a silly name that also random right and and is that Devin again in this movie it was brian unfortunately so the entire time it was like oh brian i was like oh man this is hard to <laughs> to not think about as i'm trying to enjoy this movie i'm like man they should have picked any other name and i would have been fine but uh i and it's sad because it actually the one doing it was my favorite character in the entire movie dynamite i thought the voice was strong. The character model was strong. I thought Dynamo was great. That was my favorite character. Okay. Yeah, and so I was like, oh, what a bummer to to have him be the one that's like, Brian, Brian, Brian. I'm like, okay. And then at the end, he calls him Blue Falcon because that was his character growth. Great. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna jump into the, all the cringy jokes super fast. I could probably okay. get through. There, there's like this all i do is win 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 no matter what that Man. that whole thing like i that feel song like came out in 2010 yeah what it's i'm like looking such at an old fucking your list, song i will attribute all of them like before you even read them to just being it's a kid's movie and so it's like the lowest common denominator yeah they just stupid kids will watch anything so let's yeah, write these shitty jokes and it's you so know. fucking bad uh blue falcon dabs yeah. Um, there's jokes about filters and selfies and social media, um, all coming from Blue Falcon. But he says yeah. hashtag Foxy Falcon, like LOL yeah. social media, funny. Yeah. Um, then there's like this whole like back and forth they do about paying for Netflix, which is like this. I feel like the script of this movie was written like five years ago. Um, yeah, I mean, it and then it was been. made just now. It could have been. Like, that's that's a possibility. Yeah, all of these jokes are like they've aged so poorly it, it feels like they were like dead yeah. on arrival or they were dead on arrival i can um, agree with you um, the humor is just so cringy and like trying to relate to a generation that has outgrown all of those tropes already i think it'll still work for kids i'm not i'm not saying that i think it's like so trash that kids won't like it i think yeah. it'll still work I, it disappoints me because i think that they could have been much smarter with the humor and it would have been a movie that's adults would enjoy um because I, I think if 
if the writing was better i probably would have loved this movie um which is a bummer but i see um on your your negatives uh you have the dino island with captain caveman i actually think that's a positive i think uh it was a it was not necessary, necess- you know, necessarily. I know it's a lot of necessary. It seemed like just a big set piece just to sure. introduce that character and then sure. move on. And that's like exactly what happened. If they stayed I, there. I liked it in the sense that if Dick Dastardly was the only other character in this movie, I would have thought it might be strange. But introducing another kind of made it feel like, okay, they're going for a universe thing. I understand I'm fine with it. I like the different set piece. They took us to a new location. I thought it was fine. I don't I think, think if, kids will like that. <laughs> I'm 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 okay with it all being in the same universe. I mean, all the Easter eggs in the background and stuff also indicate yeah. that it's the same universe. But um, yeah. and also, uh, Blue Falcon and Dynamite are also like their own separate Hanna Barbera cartoon property. So there's like three three way crossover here. It's already yeah. happening. Yeah. If they, if Captain Caveman like teamed up with them and like went That's into the I ship, that was, was going to happen that, in the beginning with, of the movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, or they stayed there longer, or like Captain Caveman needed to give them something. Like he was there for like a second, and then he yeah. just left. Like they introduced him, established his like mannerisms, and then they just he fucked off, and then yeah. they all left. Yeah. Um, it was like clearly like oh we're establishing this universe and nothing else it seemed like the same like justice we're gonna make justice league before all these individual hero approach yeah um so that i thought that was annoying um and it was also like it wasn't really a mystery like every I, that is movie one of is my framed as a mystery that is and one there's of my like negatives <laughs> this is like more of an action oriented I actually i, I made a new adventure. i made a new category and i put it in neutral i have pros cons and neutral um okay. and neutral is there wasn't really a mystery to solve uh i have a feeling you might play devil's advocate to argue this but i'm actually pleasantly surprised that you are not <laughs> no like i was g- planning on like okay i'm gonna say there's not a mystery this is and exactly Andy's what... gonna be like well the mystery is them finding the skull this is literally my <laughs> same exact i was saying the same thing about you for this fucking <laughs> yes yes i no. like what's happening here <laughs> thank god um, I, I agree i think there's not a mystery it, uh, is i didn't hate it um that there wasn't one But it did feel like, oh, well, this is supposed to be a Scooby-Doo thing. Like, it's weird that there's not a mystery, you know, or some sort of thing. I I feel like if they had made the... If they had made... I don't know. I don't know how to turn this into a mystery. I feel like if you had made Dick Dastardly's intentions, like, more obscure until the very end, maybe? If if you made if you made the villain just a generic villain and yeah. then they unmasked him and you find out that it was yeah. Dick dastardly, that would have been like the mother of all atom bombs of yeah, like villain yeah. reveals. Cause you'd never expect the character to be from an outside property from Scooby-Doo. Yeah. Um, that would have been fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think that there's a way that they could have established a Hanna-Barbera universe and not, and made it a non mystery. Like, I can't see how you could do it and make it a mystery. That's what I'm saying. I I I feel like they were so obsessed with like showing all these characters and locations. And I think there, there are ways I I feel like, um, I don't know. There's lots of properties that are Hanna-Barbera that like involve mystery solving. You know what I mean? The, uh jabberjaw is one um johnny yeah, quest there is was one no, they're they're there all no... about mystery solving in some way or another so i feel like the problem is in the middle of the movie dick dastardly has this heart to heart with the gang and is like yeah so i'm going to say mutley because he was trapped in the underworld and I, it was funny the joke of him like recounting the story and then it's showing what happened at the same time and he's like yeah i told him not to go and in the in the the video he's like yeah go go (laughs) i'm like okay it was funny you know he's doing the sob story and in reality he's like pushing motley to go into the underworld so (laughs) yeah 
my my last point I, I've kind of gone over uh, or skipped over a few things but my last little thing here is uh, well actually I'll say I'll say two more points but the last negative <laughs> thing I'll say okay. is that um, the universe is really cool um, is that negative? And if it, well if this movie does well like does this just mean that we're permanently stuck in this cycle of like every Scooby-Doo movie needs to be some weird Hanna-Barbera team up thing. And we're not going to see like an actual, uh, mystery oriented Scooby-Doo movie where the gang is like all together solving a mystery. It's always going to be like, a. am fine with that. I feel like we've seen enough mysteries. Like there's enough content. There are thousands of hours of Scooby-Doo content that you can watch of them solving mysteries that I think it was interesting to see them not do that. So I don't know. Yeah, it's just I feel like that that's like what they are. Like I don't I don't want to see like yeah. this team like go and save the world like every single theatrical outing. I'd like it to kind of be like I mean, a, that's kind of how the movies end up working though. They they solve a mystery, but they end up saving the world. It, it always happens on this grander and grander scale. Um like if they hadn't stopped the the evil witch then they would have like killed every you know i don't know it, sure i guess it gets, it gets bigger and bigger so i feel like them it being just an action movie isn't crazy uh it's a little reminiscent of like scooby-doo on zombie island to me like it's like this just action movie but then there is like an underlying mystery so i think that's what they're missing uh one thing I will say that I really enjoyed, which I know you've said you enjoyed on your your list, is the ending sequence with all the Hanna Barbera references, the Jabberjaw, yeah. Johnny Quest, Captain Caveman, the little that ending shit title was fucking sequence. Crazy! It was great. It was great. Um, yeah. See, like knowing all these characters exist in the same universe is great, mm-hmm. but I don't need them to be crossed over in every single movie. Like having sure. a standalone Johnny Quest movie or something would be great. And I don't need them shoving like, oh, I wow, look at all of them. Like, it's the Flintstones hanging out with Jabberjaw and the yeah, Jetsons land. Like, I, I don't, don't think properties like Johnny Quest. Here's the thing. This is my opinion. I think Scooby-Doo is barely strong enough to have its own movie. I do not think Wacky Races, Captain Caveman, Jabberjaw, Johnny Quest are remotely strong enough to have their own movies. Uh, I think it would be, uh, it would be quite some time probably to see before we saw anything like that. And I think including them in the Scooby-Doo universe is the most we're going to see of them. And I think that's exciting to me. I think it has been confirmed that we are getting a Wacky Races movie. But is it confirmed because like the Scooby-Doo movie happened, the Scoob movie happened and dick dastardly was a part of it and so now he is more in the cultural zeitgeist right now so wacky yeah. races therefore is you know what yeah. i mean like scoob well, kind of did that for them well sure i mean i think scoob is the iron man of the avengers that is the Hanna barbera y- you know <laughs> you know iron man introduces all these characters but now that they've existed they can like all exist mm. semi standalone like you can have them do their own thing now I agree, um, but I but I think my point is like you won't see standalones for a little while. Like you will see them give each other crutches and like prop each other up, and then maybe you'll see standalone versions of these shows, of these movies. Sure, that's the only thing that annoys me is just, or not the only thing. A lot of the things in this movie annoy me. <laughs> that's the only um, thing. Unrolls like thing. a cvs receipt full of all the just, things he hates <laughs> i just don't like the uh making it come across more natural as as opposed to like this weird multi-level marketing thing of this like i, I think it is what it is sometimes I don't it think... just feels like there's a way to have some sort of crossover that doesn't feel like some heartless like universe cinematic universe building thing i don't i don't and some of these See, that's where i points, disagree with you i don't feel like it felt like that Captain like... Caveman definitely came across to me as like a yeah, no. Captain Caveman exists in this universe, get ready, and then they move to the next thing. Really I think fast. they were it just felt like they were excited to show that part of the universe. Like, oh, we're gonna go here too, and like it didn't feel 
Captain Caveman himself, like, have you ever watched that show? No. It's not very I... deep. It does not. It would not have its own movie. Uh, so I feel like they showed it and that's what it is kind of like this is captain caveman and i was excited to see it and then i was like yep that's captain caveman that's it nothing more to show you know so they sure. moved on and i was my only fine. experience with captain caveman is in the uh i read a lot of the uh laugh olympics comics when mm. i was a kid which is a crossover with all the Hanna Barbera properties Mm. Um, there's a Laugh Olympics arcade cabinet in the arcade that they're in, which is kind of yeah. a neat little thing. Um, but yeah, it's just, you know, just try a little harder to camouflage things. Um, I mean, obviously we disagree on that, so maybe they did a, a better job than I, I think. I understand but, where you're coming from. I don't think you're... Like, implementing him just a little bit more into the story made it would have made him seem more integral to the plot. Like Sure. I, I, I thought it was... Or going there in general. In terms of how well the writing was, which I don't think was very good, I think they did his best. I think that was one of the stronger points of the <laughs> writing, if that sure. makes sense. that That's how I feel. So I don't discredit them for including that, and I think that that was, that was cool. Okay. Well... Um, that that's about everything. Uh, all the fucking Easter eggs, the Hex Girls. Uh, there's a yeah. concert poster of the Hex Girls in the background. Yeah, I'd say this is. And when you were back to your point, you were saying that this movie, uh, if you're a Scooby Doo fan, watch it. I feel like this movie wasn't made for Scooby Doo fans. It was made for Hanna Barbera fans. Like this is a Hanna Barbera. There's so many references to the Hanna Barbera properties in general. I, all the things in the background. I do not feel Hanna Barbera fans exist. I will controversially say. I think. I don't think that there is a person there's... that will label themselves a Hanna Barbera fan. <laughs> I don't I... think that market is wide enough that they would say this is that movie. This is the movie for them. <laughs> I think if you're, there's that. De- I disagree. I definitely believe that there is a very large group of. Okay of i'm horrible at guessing ages okay but decently aged individuals who the very stereotypical i live in my mom's basement uh who actively follow a lot of these Hanna barbera things um i'm not saying that this movie was made for like they were making this movie like oh this is for the Hanna barbera fans but if you appreciate older cartoons there, there's way more for you here than what's there for just a regular Scooby Doo fan. Like there, this there movie's is, obviously catering to like a larger. There is more for you. I'm not disagreeing, but what I'm saying is, if more you are a fan of those older cartoons, you probably will like this writing and this story a lot less. And if you are just a normal like Scooby Doo fan, then you'll probably be fine watching this. Is what what I'm generally saying. Oh, okay. I feel like if you're a big Hanna Barbera fan, sure you probably see it. You probably want to watch it, especially when you find out multiple universes are in it. Uh, yeah. But I just think, in general, if you like Scooby Doo, then yeah, watch it. See if you like it. Yeah, it the movie's okay. Um, there's a there's this really sad edi- uh, interview that came out. I think it came out today or yesterday of uh, Matthew <laughs> Lillard. Oh, really? Uh, talking about not being shaggy in this movie mm-hmm. it is really fucking sad he tweeted at the at the movie saying uh yeah i hope you're i hope you give the world what it needs right now i hope mm-hmm. you know um it's such a bummer because looking i actually looked up the he's been I, shaggy I, for like 20 years well he's been a little bit less but um like casey Kasem before him and then there was another voice actor kind of in between them um, but I looked up the voiceography for Shaggy because I wanted to see, like, have they ever done anything different with Shaggy's voice? Yeah, and, I did the same thing. I listened and, to all the different voice clips. And then when it I got to like, Will Forte, it was like... I was like, I don't want to, like, have this opinion. And then all of a sudden, like, oh, well, they've done different things. But the truth is they really haven't ever done anything different. So, I like, it's fine to try new things. And I don't discourage people from doing that. But... I just don't think it was necessary. I feel like it was just it was just for what you're saying, like to add another voice actor to the 
you know the name on the movie and hollywood in general doesn't seem to care about about voice talent in general yeah. like this seems to be a very common theme where when properties make it to the theater they usually replace the longtime voice actors of stuff like with sonic and with sure. this um yeah the only one that seems to have survived is tom kenny as spongebob mm. And I definitely think Nickelodeon has some secret lab hidden somewhere growing some clones. So when Tom Kenny bites a bullet, they're going to replace him with somebody else. But like, yeah, I just I, I think at its core, there are certain characters that you should try to rep. Like there are certain characters that maybe trying something new isn't always the best thing. You know what I mean? I don't discourage I that, that from everything, but I think in some ways maybe don't try something new. Like if they tried a new Scooby-Doo voice, like where he had a different Oof. mannerism, it would be ridiculous. Right. I mean, I just feel like it's not, people that don't always me. want that. <laughs> Scooby had like the same voice actor, but his hmm. speech pat, he talked a lot in this movie. He, he talked, like he talked yeah. noticeably a lot more and it was, he really had a lot weird. of like dialogue with other characters instead of just like, row, row, like, yeah, yeah, that was weird. Um, but anyways, I think there's a time and place to try new things. And with I like agree. this hearing the same voice for however many years that Shaggy has existed, maybe a big budget theatrical yeah. movie is not the time to like do this weird. Yeah. They, I think that they were very honest with the trailer. Like they definitely, they did not lie to us. They were like, this is what yeah. his voice sounds like. Brace for impact. Um, I started watching the last man on earth with Will Forte to kind yeah. of like, prep myself and i was like okay like i kind of like will forte he's like kind of a cool guy like i really like this show i don't know i saw this him. movie and i was like nope yeah like, i was really trying to get used to it and like yeah. no mm -mm, not for me yeah uh not about it so, i agree yeah that's my that's well, my take i mean i feel like we've kind of come to the end of what we're talking about uh yep Scoop think we was a little we, we both agree on a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, that's like. Can ever, you can you explain to me the pay for Netflix joke? Because I didn't get it. Do you understand it? Yeah. So the joke was that Dick Dastardly. Yeah. Dastardly. I know he's stealing. He, Netflix. he uses his Netflix. He yeah. uses his mom's Netflix account. Or yeah. He uses someone else's Netflix account. Then. Daphne's like, oh, that's not fair to yeah. all the people who have to pay for Netflix, like yeah. Netflix account. Velma says, yeah. Then Fred says, wait, you have to pay for Netflix? So it's insinuated that he's mooching off of someone's account as well and okay. is unaware that he has to pay for Netflix. I was confused because I was like, that makes it sound like he doesn't have Netflix and just was confused about it. I was like... But it wasn't funny either way. I was like, yeah, it was just one of those other jokes of like, you guys are getting paid. Like that's that was the joke, you know, yeah. like, you, you know, this is just another like, re Netflix, retelling of it? another joke. Yeah. So Dude, the, anyway, the streaming services are really <laughs> are really taking off. We better make a joke about it. it yeah, well they did maybe they're trying to get netflix to pick it up <laughs> i'm surprised they didn't um make a joke about um what is it is it is it peacock Quib that they're Quibby? all going on to <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i think it's it's peacock there's another there's another one that's um shit there's another oh, well. streaming service that's well, coming up we'll have to cover that on another day <laughs> We yeah, have, Brian, Brian we have wants our to leave course. now. He's, he wants to go. <laughs> this is potentially the longest episode of Desk Pop we've ever had. So. Desk Pop is getting a divorce. Brian Brian wanted a divorce. I wanted to... Brian you know, has finished I wanted, two I wanted drinks. To keep, I wanted to keep going, but... Brian needs is, to pee, so... Same. <laughs> Brian does need to pee. <laughs> uh so thank you if you enjoyed our podcast uh either visually or audi auditorily uh or smelling or through smell uh please subscribe like uh you know if you have any suggestions on what you'd like us to talk about or any comments or questions send them to deskpopcast at gmail.com or at deskpopcast on social media Yep. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thanks. See you. Smell you later, alligator. <laughs>